The Uranus satellite always remains above the same point on the planet's equator, despite an orbit around Jupiter to study the famous red spot. Uh, Jupiter rotates about its axis once every 9.84 hours. Use the data of uh, table 18.2 to find the altitude of the satellite. So we have the altitude of a satellite. And it was in, what is it, it's synchronous orbit? Yep. And there was something about once every uh, 9.84 hours. 9.84 hours, it uh, circles. We were trying to figure out the altitude of the satellite in synchronous orbit over Jupiter. So we have Jupiter. We have an object in orbit around Jupiter. We have a table on page 399, which has useful information on it. If we don't get have access to that information, we won't be able to solve the problem. And our goal is to figure out the altitude. Okay. So we will, of course, draw with our start with our free body diagram. We have the force of gravity. What uh, next, John? Um. Uh, some day, of course, in the uh, indirect. Equal? Um, uh, F, G. F sub G stands for? Uh, force gravity. Which is equal to? Uh, mass times, the mass of the satellite times acceleration. Acceleration what? Centripetal. Centripetal means? Oh, uh, inward. Center seeking or inward is fine. Okay. Keep working with this, please, Gary. F G equals up. G times uh, mass of the satellite, mass of Jupiter over R squared. Okay. And, um, mass of the satellite times, and then you can break up centripetal acceleration to um, radius times uh, angular velocity squared. Okay. <laughs> Saw you on the. Uh, everybody brought math to the satellite to the party. <laughs> This is highly redundant. We have big G, the mass of Jupiter, is equal to R times omega squared, but it is R cubed. Again, the distance between the center of mass of the satellite and the center of mass of Jupiter is the R on the left-hand side, which is the same as the radius on the right-hand side. What now, Meg? Um, just a little bit. Okay. Uh, Remind yourself what you're trying to find. Acceleration. Well, altitude, sorry. Altitude. That's not in the equation here. Oh, so replace omega with the. Uh, Never Help them out. You too? Well, the root body is the radius. Okay. That's what the radius, and then subtract the radius of the from that. Notice the altitude is a part of the radius. So let's figure out r first, and then we'll figure out the altitude. So we clearly need to figure out the radius. It's going to be big G, the mass of Jupiter, divided by omega squared. If we take the uh, raised to the power one third here, we get the cube root of big G, mass of Jupiter, divided by omega squared. It's equal to r. We do not have omega. However, we can find it. Winter, how are we going to find Omega? Um, you 
Winter, I can almost hear you. It's so close. You know how long it takes to make a complete reputation? Yes, we have the period, true. start with the equation. Remind me, Mr. P, what was the equation for angular velocity? Change in theta over change in t. Therefore, two pi radians on the top, the period on the bottom. So we could substitute in for omega. We get big G, the mass of Jupiter, divided by two pi over the period, that quantity squared. The cube root of this is equal to r. So we get, let's see, the period squared times big G times the mass of Jupiter divided by 4 pi squared. The cube root of equals R. Uh, we have the period, as you said, it's 9.84 hours. We have big G. We have the mass of Jupiter, please, from the table. Who has it for me? 1.3 times 10 to the 26. Yeah, that's right. Good. I was going to say that's less than the mass of the Earth, which would be sad. 27 kilograms, the mass of Jupiter. Good, so we have everything we need. Period 9.84 squared, big G, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, times the mass of Jupiter, which is 1.90 times 10 to the 27. Bless you, divided by four pi squared, all of this to the one third power equals R. Does it matter? That's a good question. Emily, does it matter? Yes. Why does it matter? Oh. Because the unit's not geoseconds. Notice, big G is in uh, newtons yeah. times meter squared divided by kilograms squared. Class was a newton. Kilograms times meters per second squared. So absolutely it matters. We need the 9.84 hours in seconds. So our period, which is 9.84 hours we need in seconds. So one hour, 3,600 seconds. Could I please have the period in hours? Or, I'm sorry, in seconds, I have it. We need the altitude. We have figured out the radius of the orbit of the satellite here. Dorsted? What was that? We have figured out the radius of the orbit. We need the altitude above the surface of the Jupiter. Yes? I got a Okay. I got 1.59 times 10 to the 8. That's what I got. That's what I got. Vlad over the wall. I'm sorry, Vlad. <laughs> 1.59. Uh, can we have a little bit more there? 1.59. Uh, one. One more? One. 1.5911 1. 1 times 10 to the 8 meters is the radius of the orbit of the satellite door star. We need the radius of Jupiter, please. Okay, so 
we have the radius of Jupiter dorsi. Okay, so this is the radius of Jupiter dorsi. The radius of Jupiter plus the altitude. True. So the altitude then is just going to be the radius, bless you, minus the radius of Jupiter. So we got the 1.5911 times 10 to the 8 meters minus the 6.99 times 10 to the 7 meters. The altitude of a satellite in synchronous orbit about Jupiter. 8.9213 8.9213 times 10 to the 7 meters. So with sig figs, we'll go with 8.92 times 10 to the 7 meters, or 89,200 kilometers. Good. So you can see that for the purposes of that problem, actually having memorized um, Kepler's third law actually would not have been all that helpful. In the end, it was relatively simple to just draw our free body diagram in some cases. 